A recent poll on my community tab asked how much does it cost to self-publish one book? And I was genuinely curious what authors spend today for their books. Over 431 people voted with the following results. 36% said they spent no money on their books. 27% said they spent less than $1,000 on a book. 22% spent $100 or less on a book. 12% spent $10,000 or less on a book, and 4% had spent more than $10,000 on a book. Over the past decade, I've published over 50 titles under my name and scores more under pen names and different brands. For the first two years of my self-publishing career, I fell into the bracket of $100 or less per book and sometimes no money at all. And more recently, I fall squarely under the $1,000 or less bracket. Now, most of my books make the money back within the first month after launching, while a select few make the investment back within a year or so. For instance, my five-time award-winning book, Amazon Keywords for Books, cost roughly $1,000 to produce and sold over 376 copies in the first month and a half. Everything after that was, well, it was gravy. It was extra money. Now, let's take another example in my book, The Consummate Fitness Professional. This book was a small test with transcribing audio content for a book. With an affordable transcriptionist and cover designer on Fiverr, I invested less than $100. Since I put little effort friends of the book, I wasn't expecting much. To date, that book has generated over $1,500 in sales since 2016, with the vast majority of profits coming from the audiobook edition. Now, to be clear, that's not a flex, more so a rough example of what I had to invest up front for the return. Now, this book could have performed much better with the right promotional strategies. Now, let's discuss the cost of self-publishing where I'll provide you with a good, better, best model so everyone walks away with actionable advice and the resources to produce and publish a book they can be proud of. Now, just a quick disclaimer though, spending more money doesn't necessarily mean you'll make more money. Never invest what you can't afford to lose in this business. You are not assured success by simply throwing money at the problem. My advice, start with where you're at, then reinvest any revenue you make into future publications or to improve your current crop of books. You can save yourself with all the heartache and hassle with a little research and planning before putting pen to paper. Is this step mandatory? No, but it'll save you a lot of rewriting or scrapping any future projects if you know your market first. On the good tier, you can save your money, but do a little bit more work and rely on your intuition. Study other books in your niche through platforms like Amazon, Goodreads, even your local library. Pay attention to the cover design, title choice, book description, price point, and any other relevant details. I lean a lot on Amazon for niche research, and two tools I often use together are the browser extension DS Amazon Quick View and an incognito browser. DS Amazon Quick View comes in two plans, the free version, which gives you only the Amazon US, and the premium version for $25 covering all Amazon marketplaces. This browser extension saves you the extra clicks and scrolls so you can see how well a book is performing and what category it's in at a quick glance. Now, These insights will give you a better idea about potential keywords and categories to use for your upcoming publication. You'll get a better idea of what keywords auto-populate in the search window, how many products are associated with that keyword, and the rank of the products displayed with these two tools. Now check out my 10 minute tutorial on finding keywords for KDP here on YouTube. Since we're already talking about investing a little money, let's transition to the better tier where DS Amazon Quick View Extended resides. To be clear, I've never used the upgraded version since I found the free version more than sufficient. If you're looking to optimize your metadata for a specific region outside of Amazon US, then the upgrade is definitely worth considering. All that aside, you can save the money and spend a little more to get more accurate information and remove a lot of the guesswork out of your research and prep time. Enter Publisher Rocket. Now, for only $97, you get lifetime access to Publisher Rocket along with any upgrades or additions. Now, Publisher Rocket deserves its own spotlight, and I could go on and on about how it's an essential item in my self publishing toolbox. 
I can do keyword research, category research, competition analysis, and target research for Amazon advertising. Now, the biggest difference between the good tier options and Publisher Rocket is they have terabytes of data from Amazon based on sales history, category performance, and so much more. You'll know if a keyword is worth pursuing based on a simple traffic light system of red, yellow, or green. Even the uninitiated can navigate Publisher Rocket, cutting down research time by hours, and that's no exaggeration. Coming in at a higher premium in the best tier is Dibley Create. For about $19 per month on the annual plan, Dibley Create provides what other programs don't bring to the table, artificial intelligence. Now, Dibley Create is a cloud-based word processing program, giving you the freedom and flexibility to write wherever you want. You can even share access to your project files, give access to editors, beta readers, or even your ARC team. The thing that makes Dibley Create so invaluable is the AI integration through the bot KIP. I don't have to know how to engineer the right prompt to get what I need. They have the prompt library for that. Not to mention, it helps with niche research, description writing, and outlining among dozens of other options. Let's say you want to snoop around books in your niche. Provide Kip with the ASIN or ISBN on Amazon, and then you'll get details about its strengths, weaknesses, relevant keywords, and more. You never have to trawl around Amazon again. Now, pro tip. Use Dibley Create for your foundational research, then sift through the best keyword and category options with Publisher Rocket. Having Dibley Create seed the initial keywords is super helpful so you're not racking your brains thinking about every keyword variation that may or may not be relevant or trending in your niche. The total potential cost for research and planning is about $0 to $230 or more. Writing comes in all forms, so it's impossible for me to cover every imaginable way you can produce your book. I'd rather focus on three popular ways to write your book. That would be typing, transcribing, and dictating. The good tier for typing should include free programs like Google Docs, Mac Pages, and to a certain extent, Microsoft Word. The best bang for your buck comes through Google Docs because it can export to an EPUB file, making it publish ready for eBooks. Mac Pages has it, but as you would expect, you'd have to have a Mac, so that's not exactly free. But they do export to EPUB, unlike Microsoft Word. Now, pro tip, if you're writing the first draft of your book, just focus on getting it done, not on the formatting. If you really have to see it visually appealing, then create chapter names as headings, but leave the rest as body text. The rest you can leave a note to yourself to format a spot or insert an image when you're coming to it in your final draft. The better tier for typing includes premium programs like Scrivener, which runs about 60 bucks, Vellum, which runs about 200 to 250 bucks, Atticus, which runs about 147 bucks. Now, all of those are lifetime access. Now, I don't have a dog in the fight on these programs, but have found Atticus easy to navigate with more features than I'd ever care to really use. I formatted an ebook and print book with a little friction the first time, and once I got the hang of Atticus, it was smooth sailing, and it functions much like Google Docs in that it's cloud-based. That means I can write from anywhere I want without having to be constrained to my home computer. The beauty of all these writing programs is you can write your book, then format it. Done. Unlike the free programs mentioned before, you've got far more flexibility for formatting. Everything from decorative embellishments, two-page spreads, and multi-format options for one book. Now, the good tier programs are bare bones. Sure, you can publish a book, but it will be kind of not really visually appealing. Is that a bad thing? No, it can be a turnoff for some discerning authors and readers. If you want more flexibility, I recommend the upgrade. Now, for the best tier, I'll submit another option already mentioned before in Dibley Create. It has a host of uses, and it excels at word processing and file exports. KIPP is super helpful whenever I need to reword a sentence or have to grab some resources for my nonfiction work. Heck, I even have KIPP brainstorm ideas for my fiction work, even carrying full conversations with my fictional characters. I just give KIPP the rundown of who the character is, then I have a casual chat with them. It really helps grease my creative wheels. Now, more recently, Dibley launched the content writer option, available 
to pro account holders only though. Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. Kip can help you write content. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of having AI do all of my work, but I'm sure there are some folks out there who would love this feature. Just a quick heads up, Deeply Create has two options in the free plan and the pro plan. Not all features are available through the free plan, but it's more than sufficient if you want to do basic writing. I recommend taking the free seven-day trial of Pro Access when you visit my affiliate link at dailylinks.com slash DibbleyCreate. Now, DibbleyCreate is barely eight months old and has grown leaps and bounds since it launched. If you haven't tried it recently, you're missing out big time, especially Pro subscribers. So all in for the total potential cost, we're looking at about $0 to $250, possibly more. I know. Transcriptions are technically not writing, but it still ends the same way you produce a book. The reality is not everyone has the luxury of typing classes or the time to learn, not to mention some folks with dyslexia are at a greater disadvantage, even if they can type. Rather than create a bunch of friction, why not do what you do best? Talk. You do it most of the day anyway, so why not talk out your next epic novel or produce your next how-to manual about golf ball diving? With transcribing, you're going to talk it all out and then get someone or something to handle the manuscript. Let's start it out with the good tier where you can put your wallet away. If you have a video camera on your phone or a webcam on your computer, you're good to go. Heck, even the video camera isn't necessary. So long as you have an audio recording, you're ready to rock. I would recommend recording content with the best tech you have so you're not handing off a crappy file only to get a garbled manuscript. Don't make editing your book any harder than it has to be. Use up-to-date tech when recording for the transcription. Now, simply upload a video to YouTube. Give it a few hours to process and you should get auto-generated captions. Sadly, it's going to come in one giant paragraph. I'm sure in due time, YouTube will have better auto captioning with punctuation and speaker tags. For now, you can download the caption file. Then here's the fun part. Remember how I mentioned Dibley Create? Take the text and have Kip help you punctuate the sentences and remove any nonsense so your manuscript is readable. Yes, you can do that on the free plan here, folks. Another option is called Descript, a video and podcast editing platform that combines AI with a user-friendly interface. It allows you to write, record, transcribe, edit, collaborate, and share videos and podcasts in one place. Now, if you're not in the business of video creation, that's totally fine. I get it. Forget about the video features. Now, on the free Descript plan, you can upload and transcribe up to one hour of content per month. Yeah, free. Descript is way better about punctuation and sentence structure. Is it perfect? No, especially if you have an accent or the audio isn't clear. With an hour of free transcriptions, you could easily have up to about 9,000 words or more. Now keep in mind, the good tier is free, but it is also more labor intense. You will do a lot more editing, so choose wisely. Now the better tier includes Descript Premium and one of my go-to resources in Fiverr. Now, Descript offers 10 transcription hours for $12 per month. That will get you up to about 90,000 words if we're doing 9,000 per hour. Now, on their pro plan, you get 30 transcription hours for $24 per month. You'd be talking yourself hoarse at that point, but it'd theoretically get you about 270,000 words. Of course, that number is based on you speaking at a decent pace. If you're a slow talker, that might be a bit lower. Now, I'd rather not fuss with all the extra editing that comes after getting the transcript from Descript. That's what leads me to Fiverr, a service that has thousands of freelancers looking to take care of your business needs. Now, when I did my little case study with the consummate fitness professional, as I'd mentioned earlier, I hired someone on Fiverr who charged $35 to transcribe three hours of content. Now, mind you, this was way before we had any of these previous free tools. She did it the hard way, and I give her huge kudos. Now, I didn't know it, but I was paying her absurdly low wages for what she did. To my credit, I'm a decent speaker, and the audio quality was above average. I'm sure I wasn't her most difficult client. Now, these days, her gig on Fiverr is gone, but I'm sure you can find a suitable replacement if you search around. 
Pro tip, when I'm looking for a freelancer on Fiverr, I use the filtered search feature. I narrow it down to my budget and the experience level. Now, once I find a few suitable freelancers, I direct message them to see if they'll be a good fit. I always have an excellent experience when I contact ahead of ordering. Now, the best tier comes at a much higher premium. For about $1.50 per minute, Rev provides transcription services that boast a 99% accuracy. Now, I've ordered caption files for hundreds of YouTube videos through Rev, and I've had a few hiccups. However, the company was quick to fix the issues, and I've been a happy customer for years now. Now, if you do the math, though, you'll see the bill is substantially higher than the previous options. The same hour of content I recorded with 9,000 words is going to run me, ready for this, $90. <laughs> wow. Compare that to the free Descript option, and I'll have you thinking the extra work might not be so bad after all. Now, you'd be wrong, though. If you have the budget to hire Rev, do it. Beyond any doubt, you're going to be doing much more work after Descript or YouTube provides a transcript. Now, with Rev... You don't have to worry about all the cleanup. Rev will have that structure laid out nicely for you so you can jump to editing your book, not formatting every last sentence or trying to decipher what a sentence means because AI misunderstood you. Now, is Rev for everyone? No. But a choice few folks out there might like the option for transcriptions without all the friction. All in with transcribing, uh, total potential cost, it varies based on the audio length, so I can't really give you a number, just figure out from those numbers I gave you before. Continuing the topic of speaking out your book, let's transition over to voice dictation. Whether you're a phone, laptop, or desktop computer, you can dictate your next book there. It does come with a bit of a learning curve, though. Where transcribing allows you to speak like you normally would, voice dictation requires you speaking out everything, including punctuation. Period. Do you remember being in high school when other kids spoke Pig Latin? It was essentially carny speak that I never had the time or patience to learn. Don't get me wrong. I tried speaking that goofy language. It was hard. Yes, you speak English in a disjointed way, but it didn't mean it was easy to pick up unless you spent hours perfecting it. Well, that's voice dictation in a nutshell. There are only two tiers to voice dictation. You'll find most any tech with a mic can work with free software to dictate as you speak. Years ago, I used my old crappy Android phone and Google Docs to voice dictate short stories. All I had to do was go into the document, then choose the microphone option in the text window, and done. Sadly, you will have to go at a slower clip than you do with transcribing. Free tech has its limitations, so you have to speak slowly and enunciate. The better tier option is Dragon Naturally Speaking. At a whopping $600, even I'm reluctant to invest. I used Dragon back on its 12th iteration and it was okay, but I didn't find it any easier than the previous free options. Now, some authors told me it gets better with practice, but the $600 price tag makes me a bit squeamish. The total potential cost for transcribing is zero to $600. If there's any part of the publishing process you need to invest in the most, it's the editing and proofreading. However, it comes at a rather high cost if you're not careful. Should you not have the money, you'll need to consider free options and alternatives. Do not publish a manuscript that's been self-edited alone. Yes, self-editing is essential, but it's only one ingredient in a giant recipe to turn a good book into a great book. There are a few distinct types of editing, but they don't always apply to every publication. Rather than cover every option and nuance in editing, I'll spotlight a few choices in developmental editing, copy editing, and proofreading. Now, developmental editing involves refining and enhancing your work's structure, content, and quality to make your work clearer, more cohesive, and effective. This is less about spotting typos or improper word usage and more about the overall structure and flow of your work. Now, copy editing involves correcting errors in grammar, punctuation, spelling, and style to ensure the written content is accurate and consistent. This is where you're being a bit more nitpicky about the words you use. Now, proofreading is the final stage for identifying and correcting any remaining errors in grammar, punctuation, or spelling before publication. Now, on the good tier, you're going to have to rely on your peers or authors within your space 
Whoever agrees to helping you edit your book needs to have some experience in writing or literature. Even more important is enlisting someone familiar with your niche and up to date on trends and tropes. You also want someone who isn't afraid to tell you that your baby is ugly while giving you concrete examples of how to make it better. Now, one of my closest friends and beta readers, Bill Latoria, is brutal in his notes. And I love every minute of it. I'd rather have the harshest criticism coming at me before the book launch rather than slammed with hundreds of negative reviews after publishing. But what if you have a budget? Where do you go and who do you trust? Professional editors charge based on cost per word, by project, or by the hour. The most popular option I've seen is cost per word. Now on the better tier, you're having to pay a significant premium for editing, especially based on the type of edits. Now for developmental, it ranges from two cents to four cents per word. Copy editing can cost about two cents to three cents per word. And for proofreading, it runs from about one cent to two cents per word. Now what an editor charges will vary based on their experience and your needs. Now freelance marketplaces like Fiverr and Dibley have quite a few experienced editors for all your needs. I recommend exploring your options and only take an editor for a test drive before investing in the full project. You want to make sure you gel with the editor and you understand exactly what you're both trying to work towards. Now once an editor does a sample page or chapter, you'll know if they're a good fit or not. You'll have to kiss a few frogs before you find your one print, so be patient as you vet all the candidates. Sample work doesn't come free, by the way, so be prepared to lose a little up front to find the right candidate. Once you find the right person for the job, you won't have to shop around again. Now on the best tier, I'm putting experienced editors who function away from freelance platforms. I've worked with several editors over the years and recommend two great people. Jeannie DeVita is an experienced editor having worked with both traditional published and self-published authors. She's also a writing instructor at UCLA, a second generation author, a top fave Kindle Vela author under her pen name Callie Chase. Unfortunately, I can't give you exact rates since she works with every author based on their specific needs and goals. Now, reach out to her at book-genie.com for more details and tell her Dale sent you. Now, another fantastic editor is Ava Fails. She's worked behind the scenes with me on my YouTube channels, websites, and email marketing. You can check out all her services, including editing on her site at heyyoava.com or drop her a message with details about what you're looking for. Again, tell her Dale sent you. Now, calculating how much it'll cost for editing is tough because it'll vary based on your needs and writing acumen, but I'll give you a rough example to help illustrate how much it could cost. Let's use an 80,000 word manuscript as an example since it's novel length, so that's going to be at the higher end of things. Developmental edits would be about $1,600 to $3,200. Copy edits would be $1,600 to $2,400. And proofreading would be $800 to $1,600. The total potential investment could be $4,000 to $7,200. Now that is a lot, we can all agree. One area I crowdsource is through proofreading. Now that's not something professional editors want to hear me suggesting, but when you lack the funds, you have to be resourceful. If I have to cut additional costs, I'll remove copy edits and lean on a team of experienced authors or readers in that department. Is that ideal? No, but it's better than relying on myself to pinpoint issues and having no one look over my content at all. Now, developmental edits are super helpful to me because I ramble and write in flow of thought. When I read my content back, it makes perfect sense to me. But a trained pro knows how to spot any glaring issues and holes in my writing through developmental editing. So the total potential cost of editing will vary based on your needs. For this discussion, I'll mention the example and the total cost to a self-publishing book later on. If you're enjoying this deep dive piece or any of my previous videos that cover writing and self-publishing, then you'll love my premium video on demand service at theselfpublishinghub.com. Good interior formatting improves the reading experience through visually appealing content that's well structured and easy to navigate. Consistency in design elements like font style, spacing, and layout is critical for conveying professionalism and enhancing your book's readability. 
Ideally, formatting should aid in transmitting your message clearly, influencing your reader's perception of the book's quality. It's no surprise that at the good tier, you're responsible for making it work. Programs like Google Docs, Microsoft Word, and Mac Pages are great for writing books, but less than ideal for formatting. However, if you want to make your book visually appealing without all the hassle, use the automated interior formatting tool available through draft to digital Now, while draft to digital is a free to use aggregate self-publishing company, they have some tools available to all account holders, regardless of using them for distribution or not. Go through the steps of publishing an ebook, and on the next to last step of the publishing process, you'll hit their formatting software. With dozens of templates, all you have to do is choose what looks the best, then download the files in EPUB, Mobi, and PDF. You do not have to publish through draft the digital to use this tool. Even the CEO confirmed it in an interview on YouTube last year. Now, another great free formatting tool is Calibre. This open source software is a little overwhelming at first, but with a few Google searches and YouTube tutorials, you'll find your way around it. Now on the better tier, the previously mentioned programs in Scrivener, Vellum, Atticus, and Dibley Create all have fantastic formatting options. Dibley Create is still refining their tool, so hang in there as they iron out the software. They have big plans to add more features to catch up with the other three options. The best tier is for freelancer companies and standalone businesses specializing in interior formatting. Admittedly, after years of struggling to make my own interiors, I lean heavily on this more costly option. MibleArt is my go-to company for all things in graphic design, from covers to interior formatting. Rather than fuss with typesetting and make my book look excellent, I just pay them to handle it. They charge about $64 to $300 for ebook formatting, $120 to $434 for print formatting, and $150 to $460 for both. I've also used Fiverr for interior formatting through Walt W, formerly known as Polar Bear something or other. He charges about $95 to $175 per book based on word count and number of images. I highly recommend recommend direct messaging while before ordering a gig so he can give you an accurate quote based on your needs. The total potential cost for interior formatting is $0 to $460. Everyone judges your book by its cover, so coming with anything less than a high quality professional design will leave your book miring in obscurity. Book cover design is what a lot of indie authors get wrong, often leading to low sales and discouragement. If you're not getting good book sales despite all your best marketing and promotional efforts, then you might have a problem with your cover or your book description to a certain extent. Now, for the good tier, you have a ton of free programs and resources for cover design, including GIMP, PhotoP, Canva, and more. The only problem is putting together a design requires a lot of time, education, and patience. So this comes with the steepest learning curve of all the items in this expense rundown. Now the better tier has cost-effective options for professional cover design in Fiverr and Get Covers. On Fiverr, you can get a decent cover design for as low as $5 plus platform fees, but they have higher premium gigs that cost over $1,000. Now, I've got a curated list of my preferred cover designers and freelancers at dailylinks.com slash list. I used and had a positive experience with everyone on that list. The sister company of Miblart Gig Covers is my preferred avenue for inexpensive cover design. For about $10 to $35, you can get a killer cover design. Now, I've worked with quite a few authors to get excellent services by Gig Covers and cannot recommend them highly enough. If you want to take it up to the next level, then consider the best tier with Miblart. I've worked with dozens of cover designers and companies. Miblart is by far the best. Though the cover design comes at a higher premium, the customer care and experience are unparalleled. Just provide them with a few answers and examples and then let them get to work for you. Miblart charges about $220 for an ebook cover and $270 for both ebook and print cover. Other more detailed projects cost upwards of $700, but that's an illustrated cover design for fiction books. Total cost for cover design is $0 to $700 or more. Now that you have your book ready to publish, consider the most important tool for marketing and promoting your book. Just because you did everything mentioned up till now doesn't mean you have a neon sign pointing at your book enticing readers to buy it. You must put in the hardest, most prolonged work of your author career through consistent marketing and promoting. 
rather than going extremely granular in all aspects of marketing and promotion, let's discuss the vital component to every author's marketing plan, an email list. Email marketing provides a direct connection with your audience, builds relationships, and promotes your books. By sending targeted and engaging emails, you can keep readers informed about new releases, book signings, promotions, and other updates. An email list also allows you to nurture a loyal fan base, drive book sales, and gather valuable feedback from readers to improve your writing and marketing strategies. Not to mention, you own your email list. Should you ever get canceled on social media or deplatformed by Amazon, it won't matter because you'll have your audience at the ready still in your corner. First off, do not run your email marketing through any old email account. That's just not good. You will need to leverage premium email marketing services like MailerLite, MailChimp, and ConvertKit. All three services provide a free plan for up to a thousand subscribers. Now, these good tier options are ideal for any author starting out regardless of the budget. No author needs to spend any money upfront on email marketing services unless they have an already established following. Now, once they hit the maximum threshold, they should have a hang of how to monetize that audience. I've known many authors and online entrepreneurs who have made a great living from an email list of less than a thousand subscribers. It's not the size of the list, more about the connection you have with each subscriber. But how do you grow the list beyond just promoting it on social media, on your website, and in your books? Enter author collaborations. Now work with other authors in your niche through newsletter swaps, group promos, or email newsletter shout outs. Now this doesn't have to cost a dime and only requires you connecting with other authors in your niche. That'll take a little work having to track down websites, business emails, or social media accounts. Once you find someone, reach out to them and suggest a quid pro quo system. You promote something for that author, they promote something for you. That'll take a lot of finesse and requires a separate discussion. For now, think about building relationships with other authors just like you. Now on the better tier, services like Story Origin or Book Funnel provide a marketplace of authors looking to collaborate. They remove the stress of cold prospecting for authors who will work with you. Story Origin is my preferred service and it runs for about $8 to $10 per month based on the plan you choose. If you need to do a newsletter swap, Story Origin has a massive list of potential authors. The service also has other perks like group promos, ARC team management, beta reader management, and more. I cannot say enough kind words about Story Origin. Book Funnel costs about eight bucks to 20 bucks per month. Avoid the cheapest plan at $20 per month since you can't collect email addresses. I hear great things about Book Funnel and hope to explore them soon. Now, last, for the best tier, you can invest in premium promotional services like Written Word Media or Crave Books. Both service providers have list building options through niche specific email broadcasts and giveaways. Since both companies have wildly varied rates, I'll leave it up to you to hunt down what email list building option works for you. It can cost up to $50 or more for my surface level research. I've used both companies for promos and even showcased them in previous videos. They're both stand-up companies and are worth exploring if you have the budget. The total cost for this little category is zero to $60 or more. What is the total cost of self-publishing then? As you can imagine, it varies based on your needs and your budget. In a perfect world, it'd be free to produce a high quality book, but realistically, having a budget to hire out is the most practical option. All in, you're looking at a total investment of zero to $2,050 or more. Now keep in mind, that rate can increase based on your individual needs and doesn't include the cost of editing. An 80,000 word book could cost upwards of $7,200 or more, but does that mean you pay that much? Well, it depends. No one YouTube video is going to educate you enough on the exact amount it'll cost to edit your book since it's largely based on who you work with, what their rates are, and the level of editing needed for your manuscript. An epic link novel will cost far more than a short story or essay. Not to mention that some costs are a one-time occurrence like Publisher Rocket or Atticus, and others come with recurring fees like Dibley Create or Story Origin. How much have you spent on average to write and publish your book? Did you see a positive return on investment? Hit me up in the comments with your candid thoughts. In the meantime, find out the 10 best places to publish your eBooks based on the royalty. Side note, one place gives you 100% royalty. I'll see you in this next video.